Thank you everyone. This is another day that the Lord has made. And we are certainly grateful and glad to rejoice and uh, just be thankful for what he's done. Uh, we are grateful for everyone joining in with us on Facebook. And, uh, thank you for getting up this morning. And we're looking forward to a blessed time. This is a day that we're going to uh, celebrate in our Black History uh, Movement. And we hope and pray that you will enjoy it. I'm confident that you will uh, enjoy the presentation uh, that we have uh, for you today. We're just uh, thankful. I want to open up uh, with a prayer um, a scripture and then a word of prayer. And uh, we will be moving forward uh, from there. Thank all of you, uh, those who are part of the uh, St. Mark Baptist Church uh, membership, as well as those of you who are across uh, the country, across the district, uh, those of you who have joined in with us, we are grateful. And more than uh, you can uh, ever realize, we give glory to God for the great things that he has done. Our scripture reading will come from the 40th number of Psalms, beginning with the first verse. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the harbor pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my steps. He has put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it and fear and will trust in the Lord. And we do want to uh, pray. And uh, there are many things that we need to be praying about. But from the start here, we want to pray uh, certainly for our churches uh, throughout the Hot Springs area as well as across uh, this United States of America. We want to uh, pray for all of the participants, all of the pastors, uh, that uh, they will be able to proclaim a word that will be uh, helpful and strengthening uh, to those who are listening uh, today. We do want to uh, pray a special prayer for the uh, Gray family as uh, Ms. Franklin, uh, Linda Franklin, and Jeanette uh, Brewer uh, lost their sister on yesterday. Uh, sister Peggy uh, Grave, we do want to pray for that family, Jerry Burks, and then also for Stacy Clary. So we, uh, family, we just want to uh, uh, lift them before the Lord. Our Father God in heaven, we thank you for all things that you've done and doing. We just praise you for uh, allowing us to wake awake this morning out of our sleep and to see this another day that we can witness we've never seen before. We pray, God, that your Shekinah glory will be revealed throughout this day, through your word, through those who are praising, singing, and lifting up your holy name. For we know that you are able, God, to do for us what no other power can do. We pray that you would bless, God, those uh, names that have been called, those families, we lift them up to you, the great family, God. We just lift up to you, uh, the Stacy and all of those uh, who are going through right now. Our country is in a terrible fix, God. We're going through this pandemic, and uh, there are so many things that's going on uh, that claims our attention, and we ask you to move in a miraculous way. Have thine way, God, for you are the potter, and we are the clay. Bless us all individually, collectively. Keep us all looking up to thee from whence coming all of our help. God, we need your presence. We need your power right now. Have thine way, God. You can do it. There is no other power other than the power of the Holy Ghost. And we know we can depend on you. We plead the blood of Jesus, God, because we know that the blood works. We thank you because it reached to the highest mountain and flows to the lowest valley. We ask you, God, have your way. Please uh, bless us today, God, as we uh, come forth today to present uh, for uh, the St. Martin Baptist Church. We just pray that you would bless each presenter. We pray, God, that you would just allow us 
uh, not to try to do anything for shape, form, or fashion, neither an outside show to the unfriendly world, God, but that your name might be glorified and magnified. We praise your name, God. We say thank you right now. Thank you for every good, every perfect gift. God bless all of us who need you so badly. We pray, God, for all of those that are on our prayer list, God. We may not be able to call all of their names right now, but we thank you that you know who they are and you know every need, every ailment, God. We ask you to please so look and have mercy. And there are other people that we may not even know about who need you so badly right now. God, we pray that you will move in a miraculous way. Thank you, dear God. Thank you for all things you've done and you're doing. May you continue to bless us and keep us in your care. It is in Jesus' name we give you glory and we give you praise. Amen, amen. Thank you so very much. I'm going to uh, give you into the hands of my wife, Sister Catherine Crosby at this time, and uh, our young people, they're going to uh, uh, do a presentation this morning, and I know you're going to enjoy them. Thank you for taking part. God bless and God keep you is our prayer. Did you know Louis Flatter invented carbon flatter for, for the light bulb des, design and improved train bathroom in an early air conditioning system? And Otis Boykin is known for developing the IBM computer, burglar proof cash register, chemical air filters, and in electronic resources used in in use in connected control missiles. Lisa Lisa Delapter developed the beginning of animation on the web web such as this. Did you know that Mommy G. Johnson invented the Super Soaker water gun? And he is currently working on the Johnson Energy Machine, which converts heat direct directly to electricity. And Garrett Morgan invented the gas mask and the traffic signal. And sisters Mary and Mildred Davison invented the walker and the toilet tissue holder. Did you know Dr. Shirley Jackson is noted for her development of the touch tone phone, color ID, call waiting, and fiber optic cable? And Marie Ben Brown, a nurse device, a monitor device, a monitoring system that consisted of peepholes, a camera, monitors, a two way microphone, and an alarm button. This paved the way for our modern security system. And Philip and Martin Huawei, who dropped out of school at 14 as an adult, began studying these and the construction of Bernie Combs, inspired him to rethink computer processing. In 1989, he received the Gordon Bell Prize for having invented the world's fastest computer at that time.
bow your heads and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you today, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for letting me be born, Lord. I thank you for letting this become a, a, a month on this gracious earth, Lord. I thank you for everything that you put on this earth, Lord. And I especially thank you for African American heritage, Lord. And I thank you for everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank God for our young people. Amen. Did a wonderful, wonderful job. And uh, we're certainly thankful uh, for what they have contributed uh, here this morning. Amen. Uh, I do want to uh, make mention and uh, give a shout out uh, this coming Saturday, I believe it is, uh, through the Southwest District. We will have one of our youth uh, programs and you get a chance. Uh, you know, hit us up on Facebook, Southwest District, and uh, you're going to see some of our young people uh, being uh, able to uh, perform and do great presentations at that time as well. So we look forward uh, to that. Thank uh, the parents. Thank uh, Sister Crosby and all working with our young people today. Uh, and thank God for all of you who are part of... Uh, of what it takes to do this. I want to share a word with us today. I want you to pray for me uh, and pray uh, with me. Uh, we want God to be able to speak into our hearts and speak into uh, our minds. Amen. I want to share with you uh, from the uh, book of the Acts of the Apostles, the Acts of the apostles. I want to share with you from chapter 20, chapter 20, uh, in the book of Acts. I want to begin uh, reading at the verse, uh, actually I'll start reading at verse 25. You might want to read uh, the entire chapter at your leisure time. Uh, but I want to start reading at verse 25. And indeed, now, I know that you all, among whom I have gone, preaching the kingdom of God, will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shown to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all of the flock which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer, to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will arise up, seeking, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Amen. I want to uh, share with us this morning. Uh, back in uh, the 60s, uh, you will recall Dr. Martin Luther King, uh, his last message was done in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, he spoke at the Mason uh, Temple. And 
when he got up, he spoke and he says, I left Atlanta uh, this morning. And as I, as we got started on the plane, he says there were six of us. And the pilot came over and addressed the people who were on the plane. He said, we're sorry for the delay. But we have Dr. Martin Luther King on the plane. And to be sure that all the bags were checked. And to be sure that nothing would be wrong on the plane. We had to check everything carefully. We had to guard the plane all night. Then King says, we got into Memphis and some began to say the threats. I talk about the threats that were out what would happen to him because of some of his sick white brothers. Well, King says, I don't know what will happen. We have got some difficult days King says one of the most tragic things would be in spite of the days that we have that if we stop now we can't afford to stop and that's what I want to talk to us about this morning we've got some difficult days ahead but we can't afford to stop. We have some difficult days ahead. We, you know, it's been well over 40 years. Dr. King spoke this in Memphis. Things that we thought we would have been where we would have been further along, we're still faced with difficult times and difficult days. And I submit that we even have even more difficult days ahead. What, one of the things that, that I want us to look at, Dr. King had a strong following when he marched on Washington he marched different places he had a strong following but the truth of the matter is King did not become widely accepted until after he was dead. And far too often that happens with many of us. People never really appreciate what you have done until after you are dead and gone. I believe if there was a man of color, and I believe there are many, but if there was ever a man of color who had a prophetic voice for the people, I believe it was Dr. Martin Luther King. His voice was so prophetic that he knew what was ahead of him at that particular point. And he could have turned around 
It could have stopped. It could have chosen to turn back. But Dr. King says, I don't know what would happen. And it really doesn't matter to me now. Because of the fact I have been to the mountain top. And I've looked over in the promised land. Dr. King says, I may not get there with you, but I am convinced that we will get to the promised land. What does that have to do with uh, the text? If you will study the text closely, you will find out that Paul is getting ready to leave and go to a another area and if you would read early, early in the chapters you would find that Paul was leaving because the work that he had done had begun to ex excite a riot and he was going to leave Ephesus and he was going to go now to Jerusalem and there are many scholars who says that Paul made a mistake. He shouldn't have gone. But the thing we always have to remember is Paul knew that his life from his calling would be a life of suffering, a life of pain, a life of confusion and, and uh, controversy and all of those kind of things. In fact, if you remember on the Damascus Road when the Apostle Paul was knocked to the ground, the Bible says that God told him to get on up and to go to a place, a street called Straight, and someone will tell him what to do. The man by the name of Ananias, God goes before Paul and he tells Ananias, that he wanted him to go and lay hands on Paul. Ananias began to make excuses and says, no, 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 no. I've heard about this man. I know about this man. I I, I can't go over there. And, and, and he, don't you understand, God? He has misused your people. But God says he's a praying man now. And that's what makes the difference. It does not matter how far you have gone. It does not matter what you have done. Once you come to know Christ in the pardon of your sins and give your life over to him and become a praying person, you present yourself in a, in a, in a, in a place where God can use you. All right. And God never calls any of us under any false pretense. God told Paul and told uh, Ananias to tell him, he says, go over and lay your hands on him because I must show him what things he must suffer for my sake. God did not call us to a flowery bed of ease. God did not call us to have everything peaches and cream. There are going to be some ups and downs. There are going to be some troubles and some trials and some tribulations. King says we have some difficult days ahead. Look at our country. This United States of America a whole year now We've gone through this pandemic. We've gone through this coronavirus, this COVID-19. We've gone through it. And I submit to you, while we are going through it and while we have not yet come out of it, don't miss the hand of God. Don't miss the hand of God. We, we, just, we, we just had a snowstorm. We, we've had a snowstorm and people, even, even right now, people are still hurting because their waters have been cut off. Their uh, electricity has been shut off and think, don't miss the hand of God. 
in these situations. I know, I know, I know we we like to put it all off on somebody else. We we like to do, but 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 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked way, then will I hear from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sins. There are times God. As a matter of fact, I was just listening on yesterday and I was uh, uh, listening to Dr. Tony Evans and uh, uh, many of you know uh, something about Dr. Tony Evans and uh, Pastor Doe Cliff uh, Bible Fellowship Church uh, there in uh, Dallas, Texas, uh, what church that had grown by leaps and bounds and uh, Dr. Evans has been uh, going through this COVID uh, thing and uh, lost a lot of his strength and uh, 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 even looks tired, but he kept on, he keeps on, and he keep on televising, he keep on doing stuff at home because he believes that God has called him for such a time as this. And one of the things Dr. Edmund said, don't miss the hand of God. As a matter of fact, he uses the scriptures over in the Psalms. The psalm says, it is God. I send the snow. I send the rain. I send this. And I send that. That God is up to something. And I believe that if ever a time our ears ought to be turned toward hearing the voice of God, that time is right now. Right. Our churches need to hear the word of the Lord. I'm just, I'm just amazed sometimes when I hear us preaching the word of God, and I, I'm amazed at how uh, there are times that we 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 uphold one thing and we push this and we push that and we push back on some things that we need to be pushing forward on. We have some difficult days ahead. Just to name a few we're dealing with in our country today, this climate change, this thing affecting our climate. We're dealing with health care. Yes, Senate says more spends more on health care in, of individuals in the United States of America than any other nation in the world. Not to, not to, not to uh, 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 think about we spend money on health care but we are a nation where people instead of really getting better getting worse all the time. This COVID-19 just come out of almost out of nowhere. We come up with a pandemic. Uh, we come up with a vaccine where it has taken years to come up with a vaccine otherwise. Refugees, crises, racial injustice. We have some difficult days ahead. Gun violence. We've got this thing now. Stand your ground. Law. Wow. I'm not, I'm not against people standing their ground. I just want to share this. I was uh, uh, back a couple of months or so ago, and I, you know, I, I learned about the uh, open uh, carry uh, law in the 
Arkansas and all of that. And, and I, I was coming out of Walmart. I, I, was, I was coming out of Walmart. Mm -hmm. I, I was coming out of Walmart. Minding my own business on my way to my vehicle. Yeah. And here's a man who's out toward his vehicle. I'm headed toward my vehicle. And he has a weapon on his side. And looks up and sees me as if I was going to do something to him. And he pulls back his vest. To show me he had a pistol on his side. He didn't have a badge on. He, he didn't have any of that stuff. He wasn't a law enforcement person. But it, now, now when you when you talk about the stand your ground, I could feel threatened from that. And I could end up pulling out something and shooting him because I felt threatened. We've got some difficult days yes, sir. Yes, sir. ahead. Mm -hmm. We don't even think about what we do. We just we just do whatever we feel like doing. We got some difficult days ahead. Yes, people are hungry. We've got more people here in Hot Springs, yeah. and uh, we you know. We have immigrants come in and all of this kind of stuff. And we said people ought to get a job and blah, blah, blah. And, and, uh, and there's more to it than meets the eye. Because, yes, people ought to get a job. But what do you do when there is no job for you? What do you do when you are out there and you are from somewhere else and you and now you're having to sleep going through the park? You got to. Get you some visqueen and some plastic and sleep up under that to get out of the rain. We have some difficult days. I ain't, I'm not talking about no lacks. I'm talking about fact. I'm talking about what's going on in the city of Hot Springs, Arkansas. Social justice thing. Race. Race. This gender thing, this sex thing. Mm. Women have to worry about it. They go into certain places, into the restroom. Mm. If a man is going to come in and violate their privacy, mm. we've got some difficult days ahead. We've got Laws that they're fighting, trying to get on the book where young girls can have their sex change without even allowing their parents to have any kind of say so. We have some difficult days ahead. We have more people aborted than we've had killed in wars. We have some difficult days ahead. Mental and physical things going on. Abortion and even adoption and AIDS and all of this kind of stuff that's going on in our country today. We have some difficult days ahead. Birth control. Children can make a decision seven, eight years old, ten years old, all of this. And you can do whatever you want to do and allow them to do whatever they want to do in the school. And you don't even have to contact the parents. That's a, that's a, that's a spirit from the pit of hell. I, I'm just talking about facts. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. We've got some difficult days ahead. Yes. It's the LG BT right, PT rights and BT rights and all of this kind of stuff. And we look at what's going on and they are very powerful. They count the money. And 
money seems to rule. Whoever has the money, it does not matter about ethical morals and that kind of mortality. We have some difficult days yeah. ahead. Paul, Paul said it way back then. He said, I know after my departure, Paul, Paul was actually saying the same thing that Martin King said, after my departure, there are going to be some difficult days. He said, savage wolves are going to come in, not sparing the flock. Have some difficult days. King says, I don't know what will happen to me. I know the threats. I hear the threats that's on my life from my sick white brothers. And sometimes when we think about our sick white brothers, it's not just our white brothers that's threatening our lives. It's our own brothers. We have some difficult days and our king said the worst thing you can do is stop it ain't my problem this is not listen I, don't get don't get involved in all that stuff yeah I know I know there's some things you 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 may not need to get involved but but you got to understand whenever God has a calling on your Life. Yeah. Yeah. We can't just stop. Oh, yeah. We've got some difficult days ahead. We, you know, I, I struggle. I struggle uh, here at the uh, St. Mark Baptist Church. I struggle. Yes, because because of the fact uh, we we closed down church, and I'm sure that there are pastors and ministers all across the country who struggle with the same thing. And then there are some who are saying, I don't understand why they closing down. Don't they trust God? Don't they believe God? And we struggle because we are trying to make a decision. Are we doing the right thing for our people? Or are we, and we struggle? Are we doing the right thing for our God? Forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as some have done. God has called us to meet together. And I come to tell you, nobody wants the church shut down but Satan. I'm, I'm not, I, I, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm, I'm not trying to hold no uh, committee meeting. I'm just saying, I, I'm talking about what I struggle with. All right. I, I'm talking about myself as a pastor, what, what I struggle with. I know this, this Corona thing, it's, it's just, it's going all around. Then, then it started going down. It'll come back up. All, all, I, I understand all of that. And I know that there are hundreds and thousands of people who have died. But then it caused me to struggle again. Because I have to struggle uh, and ask myself, is everybody dying from COVID-19? No autopsies is being done. Oh, I, I need to get off this truck. I mean, you know, I, you know, uh, <laughs> People die every day. <laughs> we hear people climbing up the ladder and they went up the ladder and fell down, hit their head and died. He died from Corona. We have some difficult days ahead. King said the worst thing you can do For the right. We've got to know that God is God and he is God all by himself. Now I'm not trying to convince anybody to, 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 to just go out and get in a fight and, and uh, start you know political arguments and all of this. I'm, I'm not asking nobody to do that. 
I'm just telling you what I struggle with. That, that's all. I'm just saying. You know, one thing I do know, he called me. I watched the other day uh, the sermon of Dr. King while he was preaching that message. Uh, one of the things I've tried to do is when people are speaking, I try to look in their face. Because I not only want to hear their words, I want to read their face. Are, are you saying one thing with your mouth and your facial expression saying something else? I was looking at Dr. King while he was he was uh, speaking. And he knew that would be his last message. Well, Crosby, how do you know that? I could see it in his face. Can you imagine a man saying, I don't know. I don't know what will happen. I don't know. Longevity has its place. I like to live a long life. Like any other man. But he says, I'm not worried about that now. Why? Because I've been to the mountain top. And I've looked over in the promised land. <coughs> and he says, here's the good news. I may not get there with you. Amen. But notice what he said. We will. We will. That, that seems to be a little contradictory. I may not get there with you, but we will. We, we after saying I may not, but we will All right. All right. get to the promised land. Because why? How do I know that? How, how, do I, how am I convinced of that and, and threats on my life? I've looked over for and I've seen the glory of the Lord. I may not get there with you, but we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We need men and women who will stand up with a prophetic voice of telling the world. Don't stop. We, we're not into getting out here fighting, shooting, looting, and all this kind of stuff. I, I tell you, I'm against that. I'm against that. I think that's from the pit of hell. But I am for us standing for truth. I am for us standing for righteousness. I am for us standing for holiness. Paul says, I'm, I'm leaving you. Somebody said he made a mistake. He shouldn't have went. He couldn't help but to go. There are some things we have to have that can't help us. Can't help us. You, you know it will cost you. And it's not one of those things. And I know we say sometimes as I come too close. If you do it, it might cost you. It might cost you your life. Let me tell you something. It, anything that you do for God will cost you in one way or the other. 
No question about it. God loves us. Yes, sir. He loves us. And he will take care. He will bring us out more than conquerors. Yes. We cannot settle for schemes. We can't settle for trickery. We can't settle for devilish moves. Paul said, I'm, I'm going to leave. And I know after my departure, grievous wolves will come. Not sparing the flock. But this is what he said. Take heed to yourself. Feed the flock which the Holy Ghost has made you overseer. All right. Amen. I've got to know. Crosley got to know. I don't know what anybody else knows. But I have to know. And one thing I do know, I know I know that I know he called me. He, he called me. Hallelujah. He called me. And so I can't stop. I've got to do what i got to do. i got to preach the word. Under the anointed and the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And I submit to you, there is not a man born who truly preaches the word of God that does not run up against some difficulties. Yeah. Who is my example? Is it Martin Luther King? Is it the Apostle Paul? Mm -hmm. They are good examples. Yeah. But there's another man. Yeah. Yeah. He came to his own. And his own received him not. But as the many as received him, mm -hmm. to them gave he the power to become mm -hmm. the sons of God. Lo, I come in the volume of this book to do thy will, O God. Yeah. Unlike Martin Luther King, I, I don't know what will happen now. I, I don't know. I, I do, do know we've got some difficult days ahead, but I don't know. I don't know if I'll make it. I don't know if I'll make it out of Memphis. I, I do not know. But I do know we'll make it to the promised land. Jesus said, if this, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. And it was because of that commitment, it took him to Calvary. Where he gave his back to the whip. He gave his head to the crown of thorns. He gave his side to the sword. His back to metal and bones. Father, into thine hand, I commend my spirit. <laughs> he gave up the ghost. He died. I've been I've been to a lot of funerals, a lot, a lot of funerals lately. I've been to a lot of funerals. But I just wonder, although we do not have a record that they have funerals like we have, was a day it must have been when they took him down from the cross. And rock, wrapped his body in burial clothes. Who said earth to earth, dust to dust, ashes to ashes? Put him in that fiery tomb. But early that 
next Sunday morning, you got up from the grave. Yes. Yes. And declared that all power is in his hand. This may not make sense to anybody right now, but somewhere down the road, I hope we'll understand. We've got some difficult days. Yes, Lord. But we can't stop. We've come too far. We're too close to turn around. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody today is trying to think through what is he talking about? What's, what's he really trying to say to us? I'm trying to tell us, if you don't remember anything else I say, I'm trying to tell us don't allow ourselves to get into a position where God says to us, Ichabod, Ichabod, the glory has departed. The church needs to stand that the glory of God may rest with us. God loves us, saints. Pay attention to the snow. Pay attention to the rain. Pay attention to the storms. Pay attention to the pandemic. But don't put your eyes so much on snow, pandemic, and all of that. Watch the hand of God. And ask ourselves, ask him, God, what are you saying to me? I want you to speak to me, Lord, that I may hear your voice and know that you are God. Hallelujah. Somebody today might want to trust God. Maybe you're listening on this Facebook and you... You just want to send us a, a message and let us know and we'll get in touch with you. But I'm just telling you, this is not a time trying to make everybody shout. Right. It's a time that we need to try to make people think and invite us to understand that God is holding us responsible. Be not deceived, God is not marred. Whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. And I come to tell you, it's not the Republicans, it's not the Democrats. In my opinion, my humble opinion, it's the church that has fallen short. The church has fallen short. And this is a good time for us to come back and trust God as our Lord and our Savior. I would pray for you. There may be somebody today. Maybe somebody saying, Pastor, just pray for me. I am weak. I'm confused. I'm disturbed. I'm depressed. I don't even know what tomorrow holds. I'm frightened and I don't even know why I'm frightened. I feel hopeless. I'm struggling. But today we can give that over to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, oh, how precious is your name. How we love you. And we come and we want to confess that we've sinned. We've come short in your glory. We've done things that we ought not to have done. Said things that we ought not to have said. We failed to do things that we should have done. We should have lifted up your name. And we just acted in a light days of your attitude. But God, we want to lay ourselves bare before you right there and ask you to please, sir. Strengthen us. Build us up. Teach us how to walk in holiness and righteousness. Circumspectively, not as fools, but as wise. Redeem the time, knowing that the days are evil. 
we need you right now. As a black race, we need you. Our history is your history. We are who we are, not because of the color of our skin, but because of the trust that we have in you as Lord and Savior. Heal us, God. And we pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Let us continue to remember those who we ask to pray about. Remember our own. This, there are so many things that's going on. God bless, bless, Lord. Bless this country, God. Bring us to our knees, God. Help us to realize who you are. And help us to realize whose we are. Teach us, God. Thank you for Mother Ashley. Thank you, God. For Mama Katie. God, touch them in the name of Jesus. Mother Annie Mae Jackson, God, in the name of Jesus. We lift up to you the graves, family. Do it, God. Do it, God. Oh, God, be. Stay safe. Please, son, look in heavens. Pray for my wife. I pray for my children. Pray for my son-in-law. God, thank you for what you've done for me. God, we pray that you give him the strength. The doctor says, told him there are some things that he's got to cut out, not possibly cut out. He's got to stop. And I pray that you give him the strength to do what needs to be done, that his own Amen. life will be spared and his life will be able to flourish the way you want it to. Thank you for his wife. Thank you, God. I pray for my son-in-law, Reverend Rod McCullum, his sister in Atlanta. I pray for her. She's gone through this COVID-19 and God, uh, how you bless for her the fever had gone I, we ask you to please uh, have mercy. I know you're able, God. There are so many others who need you. I pray that you would bless mightily by the power of the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you, God, for allowing us this time to share in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, sir. Let's continue to pray one for the other. I want to remember Brother Austin uh, Softly, who had an accident a little over a week ago and uh, rolled his car. And uh, thank God he had bone broken uh, through his eye, but uh, thank God he's alive. Amen. He's here. Amen. Thank God for uh, Sister Jessica Foxworth. We want to continue to lift her up. Yeah. Uh, before you and uh, sounds like she's doing much better so let's keep her lifted before the Lord mm -hmm. and uh, I hate calling names because inevitably I forget somebody but God you know who they are mm -hmm. so bless us all thank you so much mm -hmm. to God be the glory great thing you, he's done we look forward to our people on our Sunday school uh, Zoom today thank you amen amen